Normally with the expansion series, I'm always trying to convince you that something is a great idea and that something is going to happen. And as much as it breaks my heart to tell you this, I would love to see the monorail lines get expanded. I would love to see the monorail ripping all through Anaheim, but I'm here to tell you that it's probably not that realistic, even though in all of our hearts, it's what we would want the most. Today, let's break down how the monorail could extend outside of its current footprint, but break down why it probably won't. And no, I'm rooting for all of this to happen. That's why I'm trying to break it down in the most logical, most affordable way to have the monorail expand at the Disneyland Resort. I just don't think that it's possible. I don't think that it's affordable and I don't think that it's what Disney's going to do, but that's not going to stop me from dreaming along with you. Now, another major reason why I don't believe this plan would ever work is keep in mind that the monorail officially puts you inside of the Disneyland park, not the Disneyland resort, the Disneyland park. So currently we get on either at downtown Disney or inside of Tomorrowland. But in both of those areas, you were scanned in for Disneyland, not DCA. So if a monorail was picking guests up over at the new parking structure or down at the new theme park development site, those guests currently would have to be Disneyland reservation guests. If you're going to DCA, it's not going to do you any good. And if you only have a ticket for whatever the third gate is, that's not going to do you any good and having to exit the monorail for people that aren't in the system it's not gonna work but we'll just see how the track could go trying to ignore the blatant rule that these guests would all have to have a reservation or ticket for disneyland they are not removing the monorail from tomorrowland no way that's happening so we're just going to throw that right out but i'll keep humoring people that want to know what it would look like if they extended the monorail path at disneyland ford don't think it's going to happen because of that security issue but let's keep looking at the track that i've plotted out for each of us to explore so today's video is going to be broken down into two different chapters the red line, which I believe is probably the most problematic way to extend the monorail's footprint, and the blue line. The blue line, I believe, is the most probable, affordable way that this could happen. So let's jump in with the good news first. Let's try to break down what I'm calling the blue line, the most probable way, the easiest way, affordable way, that the monorail could get extended at the Disneyland Resort. Now, something we have to keep in mind to be realistic about all of this is that monorail track is very expensive. So our goal is to lay as little track as possible. And also to keep in mind, monorails don't turn on a dime. So we need to make sure that all of our turns are natural in the flow of the vehicle because it does not take right angles. It takes soft, gentle turns in whichever direction it needs to go to re-navigate itself from north to south to east to west. So with our two goals established of trying to lay as little track as possible and keeping in mind realistic turns for the monorail, let's start over at Manchester Ave and Harbor Boulevard. This is where the monorail comes out of Tomorrowland. The monorail is already on a turning path, as you can see right there. So it would only make sense to keep that turning path consistent with the new track. So in this corner here, with the proposed blue line, I have the monorail coming outside of the park on the blue line somewhere in this general vicinity, working its way over Harbor Boulevard. So imagine somewhere in here, instead of the monorail running parallel with Harbor Boulevard, it would then cross over on Harbor Boulevard where it would actually run down the center of Harbor. Because what makes my blue line the most efficient is it has the monorail running all the way down Harbor Boulevard, jumping out over here at Manchester, staying down the center of the street would give it the least amount of track that would need to be laid, the most efficient route, eventually taking guests to the new theme park district with a stop along the way, a stop on Harbor, where guests can come over from the new parking garage, hop on the monorail, and then get on the loop. So with the blue line, somewhere in this area, we would begin our ascent 
over to riding down the center of Harbor Boulevard. Now for a reason that I'll make clear to you later, keep in mind too with the blue line when the monorail would come over Harbor Boulevard, it would go down Harbor, but it would have to go opposite of the traffic. And this will make sense when we get to the far end, when you understand why the monorails would have to be on the opposite side of how the cars are flowing down the street. It all has to do with the switchback to get back over to the existing monorail track. Even though it would have tons of obstacles, the monorail running down the center of Harbor Boulevard would be the least amount of track needed, the most straightforward path it could take. If there would be a way to make it happen, I really see the blue line as the only realistic option without this project getting way out of control with reality and its budget. Disney does own this property back here. This is where the new parking garage is going in. Now with the more realistic blue line, you would see guests go from the parking lot space where I'm standing up in the sky. They would join the monorail over here on Harbor because there would need to be a train station somewhere here for guests to get off to work their way over to their car or guests to get on to get inside of the Disneyland bubble. Definitely way more realistic, something that we see in a lot of cities like Los Angeles, Chicago, where they have train stations that are up above the main thoroughfare where people are coming and going. This relies on a lot of cooperation for the city of Anaheim, local vendors maybe not too excited about it, but for the blue line to include this parking structure, which is gonna be 18,000 parking spots, it does need to have a station. And that station would be right behind us as this would be the entry point to get people over there. So the one major upside to the red line is it takes guests back to the parking garage. But as we're breaking down, that creates so many more headaches than just keeping people flowing up and down Harbor Boulevard, 20 feet, up in the sky in the monorail. This area in here would be where the blue line would return guests back into the existing circuit. Now keep in mind the monorail track that is behind me, the curvature would be completely backwards. Then it would be traveling north and need to go west. Therefore, this entire piece would have to be completely removed meaning that somewhere in this area would be where the monorail would cross over Harbor Boulevard, gently taking a left-hand turn that would then let it continue its way on the existing track inside the current footprint of the Disneyland Resort. So with our blue line, the reason why we have guests running on the opposite side of traffic, going against traffic, once the monorail makes its way to its final destination, which is the Toy Story parking lot currently, listed as a theme park development space, then the guests are gonna to need to go back up harbor. Keeping them on the opposite side of the track gives the monorail the ability to turn back onto the existing track right behind me. If the monorail was to travel the same way as the cars, there would need to be a switch over the track, which creates a lot of height, a lot of extra track, trying to get it to where one monorail can go over the top of another one. This is something, as far as I'm aware of, does not exist on any of the Disney monorail circuits. So therefore, going against traffic gives them the ability to bring the returning monorail back into the existing track without having to make one monorail go over the top of the other one so that it can easily so make, make this turn right here rerouted to bring people back into the current Disneyland Resort. Now, something to keep in mind is that the benefit of a Skyliner is that it can turn on a dime. It has the ability to do a U-turn. It has the ability to do a series of hard right angles. Skyliner gives you the most efficient footprint. A people mover as well could do a small circle that then would send the people mover back in the direction that it came from. But a monorail, as we discussed, it needs time to make its turn. So somewhere inside of this theme park development district, there would have to be a loop for the monorail to either on the blue line, do enough of a circle that it could work its way back over to Harbor, or on the red line, do some sort of a loop to work its way back up to the parking lot. So once again, another thing that makes the monorail difficult is they'd have to plan the monorail into this new park. 
which for fans that love riding the monorail monorail views no big deal but for disney having to plan around a monorail course and then be cemented into that footprint very big deal now with the convoluted red line i have the monorail protruding out here somewhere in this area and also returning in this area creating one entry and exit point would be the most affordable way to bring the monorail back inside of disneyland but on the red line, we're not going down harbor, which trust me, I understand has tons of obstacles, but instead we're going to run parallel with harbor on the property that Disney owns on the back side of harbor, where the new parking garage will be, where Garden Walk is, and eventually getting over to the new theme park district. But the red line has lots of problems and coming and going in this pinch point is one of them, but if you bring the monorail over here and bring it back, you save an insane amount of resources. Because if you bring the monorail back over Harbor anywhere else, then you also have to run track all around Harbor and its neighboring businesses. So in my mind, it's either all Harbor or no Harbor. That's the big difference between the red line and the blue line and why the blue line would be the most efficient and why the red line would be overly complicated but I'm willing to show you the complications. With our red line plan, the monorail still comes out in the Tomorrowland area, but we also have it returning here, but it creates a massive problem in where oh where in this direction does the monorail have the ability to make a right turn to continue over to the new parking garage and eventually make its way to the Toy Story District. As I have showed in previous videos, this area through here is very, very dense. There's not an opening to get the monorail running back through here to connect over to the property that Disney owns. That means already making this super expensive, one of these properties on this street would have to sell so Disney had that opening to make its way over to the parking lot that it owns. They own a lot of land all the way down to the next corner, but a lot like playing the game of Monopoly, they don't own this corner, which make it very, very hard for the monorail to find an entry point to penetrate this district so that it could run over to the parking garage and continue on its path. Already a major financial and obstacle snag with the red line. So there is an idea that with the red line that maybe the monorail could swing over in this area, making a gentle turn from Harbor Boulevard that would take it all the way back here over to the new parking structure, picking up guests, then moving over to the other locations on the route. But making this turn would be possible, but it would have to be a pretty big loop that would go over Harbor. And keep in mind, with the red line, the whole idea is where the monorail exits, it also enters. So you would essentially have that Y placed right here in the middle of the street, not down at Manchester. Over in here is where the new proposed east parking structure would be three options I can come up with to get over to the theme park district. All three of them very, very troublesome. So another detail that we need to keep in mind with these three lines that are coming off of the parking structure is that the monorail would have to come and go in the exact same direction. It's going to be way too tight to get one of these lines approved and to have multiple lines approved is multiple expenditures, multiple land you have to negotiate with. Trying to keep this back to our original goal, as small as possible, as affordable as possible, whichever line was picked, you have to envision monorails coming and going back and forth on the exact same line, which is why I believe that our middle option is not an option because it would take an incredible amount of width to run monorail through the garden walk. And where our Skyliner video, I think, did a very good job of proving how that theory could work, the monorail gets too wide, too high, too expensive. I just don't think the garden walk path is a real option here. Technically, yes, it would work, 
But to make it happen, woo, we are talking hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. But let's break it down. The orange line or the center line has us going through garden walk. However, that is not going to be easy with this extra amount of width, height, noise, and weight and expenses of bringing the monorail through the shopping district. It is a clear opening technically that would get over to Toy Story, but not without a lot of obstacles. Uh, I had no idea that any of this existed. Whoa, this is wild. What in the hell did I just stumble into? <laughs> The discovery of this series has been absolutely wild. That is such a bizarre scene. Not only all the digital fish tanks, but that bizarre theme track. What the hell is that? There are many terrifying stories. I could tell you of what has happened to this land of death. Hey, I know those guys. It is so unbelievably loud back here. Call me crazy, but uh, female screams coming from a parking garage? I don't think that one's going the way they intended it to go. Garden walk is absolutely insane today. So as we're cruising through here, trying to stay on task, envisioning a monorail, you know, you just gotta think about that infrastructure just wouldn't fit in here as this exists today. It would be a massive reboot, a massive retooling of the entire space. Now, everybody keeps going, oh, but Bricky, what about Garden Walk? Look, Disney's gonna buy this at some point. They're gonna own it. In the proposal, there's a Garden Walk overlay suggesting what they would do over this area. And I take that as a wink, wink, nod, nod. Eventually, we know we'll own it one day. This is what our plan is. Even though it's wide here at the berth over to Catella, that's not always the case. So once again, just because it's technically possible doesn't mean it's realistic. So we're standing on the corner at the top of the blue segment that you see on the map, which would be the blue line for the red line. I know I made it incredibly difficult. This is Clementine and Disney Way. This stretch could hold a monorail, but there are a lot of obstacles. Let's break those down. I feel like if Disneyland was gonna take over a street, it probably wouldn't be Clementine. If the city of Anaheim is willing to give Disneyland a street to take over, it would be Harbor Boulevard not the Clementine, which has hotels on each side of it, a fire truck that needs to get going from the fire station that's midway through on the street. It could be possible, and I love showing you what's possible, but I also love breaking down probability. Technically, the blue line could go from the parking district over to the theme park district. It could happen, but I feel like there's a couple of obstacles, and once more, if Anaheim was gonna give Disney a street, they would wanna give them Harbor Boulevard for the flashiness, for the simplification, and for letting everybody know that is Signature, the resort theme park district, the entertainment district of Anaheim, that the city of Anaheim is so proud of. Now, if we were to take the yellow line that you see and be all the way over to the west, snug up to the back of the existing hotels, taking you along the west side of the Garden Walk, could it work? Potentially on this end. But as we go around to the back side, we will find lots of difficulties proving this path not to be the way. I feel like I somehow now do more videos outside of the parks than inside of the parks. 
such a strange twist <laughs> my theme park vlogging career has taken. But hey, I appreciate you guys going on these adventures with me. Nobody's making content like this, so thank you for showing up and proving me that there's an audience for people just like me that are fascinated about how the resort could scale and grow. On the back side of our first line, you see that it eventually dumps out over into hotels on this side of Catella. And then across the street, the end of the yellow line brings us over to Little Boy Blue. As I said before in the where Disney's going to build its next theme park video, Little Boy Blue, as I believe, is just waiting to turn green. And I'm not talking eco-friendly. I'm talking cash money because this place is a dump but it is sitting on a prestigious plot of land that could stand in the way of something coming across Catella or stand in the way of giving Disney more space for its upcoming theme park district. So many different things to keep in mind that the monorail, technically, whenever you ride it, you are inside Disneyland. That would have to change. Incredibly expensive to remove the monorail from Disneyland. That's not gonna happen or to add it to where every stop along the way you're inside Disneyland, but we're, we're, we're ignoring that because I just wanted to show folks if they did do the monorail, these are the options that are realistic, even though I feel they're pretty unrealistic. So this park here, whatever becomes here, would have to have the monorail running around it. We all enjoy that. Disney hates it because then they're locked into that footprint. So there you go, friends. The blue line, the red line, let me know below. Which line would you prefer? Which do you think is possible? Did this video help you understand that eh, the monorail in Anaheim probably just isn't the way? Or who knows? Maybe it unlocked your imagination and you're seeing a line that I can't see. And maybe you're right and I'm wrong. Who knows? This is all about imagination, all about looking at Disneyland forward and dreaming with the possibilities of tomorrow based on everything that we know from what's happened so far in yesterday today both here in anaheim and out at walt disney world in orlando friends bricky here on the edge of the upcoming theme park district theme park developmental zone thank you so much for watching i appreciate you showing up and watching these insanely niche videos why don't you do me a favor subscribe to the channel go on this adventure with me so many more of these to come and you don't want to miss one make sure you go back in the catalog i have a playlist with all the disneyland ford expansion videos for you to look at these will all be a historical record on what it looked like what i predicted and what actually happened and you know we'll be going back and forth in this timeline as things develop thank you so much for showing up i'm so happy that you went on this adventure with me until the next time we rip the parks together i'll see you real soon thank you i appreciate you